Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk to you guys about all the wonderful things I have for you guys today. I got Flagship Friday. I got uh, some news stuff. I got uh, the City uh, Council report for you guys as well as pre-critic and a bunch of events and new programs we're going to be airing on MCAT. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 32 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 66. Your low is going to be 27, and it's only going to get hotter this weekend. Your high is going to be 70 degrees, so this weekend may be the weekend for you to be out and about as the cold, cold weather is start going to start seeping in as we get closer and closer to the election. And um, before we get into election, there is a little bit of breaking news that happened just earlier uh, Friday morning around 1 a.m. There has been a double homicide at a Missoula motel. Uh, believe, it or, uh, believe it, it was at the Mountain Valley Inn at 1 a.m. on Friday and found two people dead. So far, no information has been released, but three suspects are wanted in information about this double homicide. They have located vehicle that they believe is related to the double murder, and that's what they know so far. If you have any information, uh, call the police. Um, moving on, the city of Missoula had quite the welcome with uh, this little doohickey right here. This morning, uh, uh, yesterday morning, um, on Waterworks Hill, uh, next to the peace sign, uh, protesters put up the dump truck sign. Um, but before uh, he landed, people took this down. But the L and the M were able to put up some signs of their own. So people, protesters, put up signs on the mountains. Um, this one for the M says impeach, and this one says liar. Uh, so this, these are some of the pictures that were put up in protest for Trump visiting the city of Missoula. So basically, the Missoula had, uh, they had this because Trump was in Missoula. Um, just so you know, just so you guys know, I'm, I'm sure you must have heard about uh, Trump being in Missoula. Uh, his rally started uh, around 6.30 p.m. It was live pretty much anywhere and anywhere that you would could Google it. So um, you could probably can watch it after the fact as well. But of course, uh, most of what he was talking about is Trump came down on uh, John Tester. Uh, he praised Greg Jean Forte, uh, U.S. Um, House Representative of Montana for assaulting a reporter and promoted Matt Rosendale while also talking about how the Democrat Party has been attacking uh, his nomination, Brett Kavanaugh. The President Trump has uh, been in Montana three times so far with his son Trump Jr. going to Bozeman just last month. Um, to find out more information, go to Missoulian. In state news, uh, a bear... Uh, bit off more than it can chew the other day as they was found in uh, as it was chased into a garage near a valier on the Rocky Mountain front um, grizzly bear weighing more than 900 pounds which is big by any bear standards was tranked when the bear was cornered inside the garage of a home and refused to move the bear was put into fish wildlife and park custody Wednesday and it took six people with a tarp to move the bear which is large enough by of course Montana standards it was relocated to Pike Creek west of East Glacier the bear was was uninjured. Fish, Fish Wildlife and Park encourages hunters and other outdoor recreationalists to carry uh, bear spray in case of encounters with bears or mountain lions. In national news, EPA is proud of itself when a low number of greenhound gases were emitted uh, are, are at an all-time low since last year. Uh, they decided uh, the report says U.S. production of heat-trapping gases was 2.7% lower in 2017 than previous years. Despite the improvement, independent analysts say that the uh, country is likely to fall fall short of the pollution controls needed to uh, rein in global warming. But many plants are uh, closing regardless, which may have attributed to the reduction of greenhouse gases. Um, Trump says, uh, you'd have to show me the scientists because they have a big political agendas. The president said in response to global warming, Trump has made a priority of rolling back Obama air climate policies, including measures designed to cut pollution from power plants and automotive uh, tailpipes. Officials from EPA uh, say that the current play, uh, pace used greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions in 2025 will be about 15% below their 2005 average levels, but 2025 is when the Obama era initiative climate changes will end. And so, that's uh, after that. It's completely unheard of where the uh, emissions are going to be after 2025, um, and that's what you need to know about what's happening in the news. Uh, you can always look up NPR.org for more information. There's a lot happening, but I'm just giving you the brief, the skinny, and all that. Uh, so here's a couple of new programs going to be airing on MCAT, and then I got some pre-critic and flagship Friday for you guys right after this. 
And thank you, candidates, for being here. We really appreciate you taking the time um, not only to uh, answer the questions that have been prepared, but also to hear from the can from audience members um, with some questions, additional questions as well. So I'd like to explain the format and the rules of the of this panel. Um, as Stacy mentioned, we're a nonpartisan educational forum, and really we're here to educate all of us about questions that are of concern. So we're why we're here is because we, we all benefit when there's conversations about issues that are um, important both to, um, to audience members and to candidates. people up on the mountain, we fight so hard, like anybody else. So that's why the CIA coming direct to the Hmong people. And we try to stop the Ho Chi Minh Trail from North Vietnam to South Vietnam to reduce activity fighting on South Vietnam. So that's why the Hmong people uh, work so hard side by side with, with the United States. So nice to see you guys, and I still here, I still living here forever. So thank you so much. But I don't believe that jury died for myself. Because I talked to him before he he left here. So thank you. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the stories and stones, and you can watch that anytime at MCAT.org. I suggest you watch it. There's a lot of good uh, stories from the past from Missoula's uh, historical figures that have come through here as well, and you get to learn a little bit more about people even after they die. All right, so let's talk about some stories that you may or may not want to see. It's time for Pre-Critic. Um, a movie coming out this week. It's probably like the only movie that's really getting slated and get really getting buzzed, and it's this one. This one right here. So, uh, yeah, from the good Halloween movies, um, number one comes a uh, direct sequel to number one, which follows Michael Myers. It's like the other movies didn't exist. Hmm, that seems to be a trend nowadays. They're just saying, hey, remember the good things about the past? Let's kind of do that again. Let's try it again. Anyways, uh, so anyways, Michael Myers is coming back f to Hattonfield for a bunch of killing. Uh, and to be defeated, you know, question mark, that kind of deal. You know how the movie always goes where it's always like the killer does on a killing rampage, the person, they somewhat defeat him, and then it's ambiguous at the end. That's usually how it is. Of course, that's all Halloween movies in a nutshell, you know? Uh, but of course, you know, if you dive a little deeper, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Really, it's mostly about um, a government conspiracy to kill children. It's weird. You, you should check it out. It's really weird. But anyways, um, let's see. Anyways, so uh, Halloween is back, and it brings back uh, some people, some actors, some old school actors from the very first movie, um, except for Donald Pleasant, of course. Um, and this movie uh, will make you say, yeah, baby, yeah. Wait as way too many, uh, make too many connections to the Saturday Night Live and Austin Powers alum, um, Mike Myers. 
All right, move on. Wow, that was rough. That was really rough. Let's see if I can. Um, we have Melissa McCarthy, McCarthy in a movie about a writer, and get this. It's based on a true story. Why not? Everything's based on a story. She writes a book as nonfiction, and it turns out to actually be fiction, which results in her losing respect among her fans and publishers alike. She loses everything, and this movie somehow probably will make the author a tortured soul who needs redemption and to be forgiven. But usually backfires uh, Mel Gibson. Um, he's not in this movie, but he just keeps breaking my heart. Up next, uh, here, just so you guys know, we're doing a lightning round. There's a bunch of other movies out there that are coming out. We're going to start with the lightning round. Watch a series looking about a boy growing up in the mid-90s in L.A. when the biggest thing happening in the U.S. was president, presidential adultery. Um, but hey, Jonah Hill directed this movie, which means something, right? Up next, we got a police officer signed uh, alarmed dispatch duty enters a race against time when he answers an emergency call from a kidnapped woman. Starring Chris Evans, Kim, ben Kim Basinger, Halle Berry, Abigail Breslin. No, actually not any of those people. You don't know anyone in this movie, but it's basically the same plot of a couple of movies of those people have been in, which about a kidnapper uh, or a kidnapped victim calls the uh, dispatch police and they're mostly just talking on the phone. And I think there's always something to do with like uh, the dispatcher's uh, only way to save themselves and their internal struggle is to save this kidnapped victim. And that's kind of what this movie's probably going to be about. Next, we have a movie star starring Hilary Swank. The Advocates, LA's homeless problem is brought into the spotlight in this documentary. If you like documentaries, then you ha will like this movie. It always seems to be that way with people who like documentaries because they love documentaries and they love telling you about how much they love documentaries. So watch this documentary. Um, and people who love documentaries usually hate movies. Hey. I'm starting to make a connection here. All right, so that's pretty much it for Pre-Critic. If you want to know more about those movies, too bad. I don't like any of them. Let's talk about something else. Hey, let's talk about another interesting thing. We got a newscast from our very own kids um, of MCPS School System. So we're going to throw it over to them. Um, and then when we come back, we'll talk about some city council stuff. So stay with me. Strawberry tops. Don't give them strawberry tops. Oh, oh Hadley. Next up, I'm talking about how bunnies are not just Easter presents, but much more. Hi, I'm the local cobbler, and here we have some sh <laughs> shoes. One pair of shoes for sale. One ninety-nine. <laughs> Wait, I mean nine ninety-nine, ninety-nine, ninety-nine. <laughs> Well, come in and get them. Hello, customer. Hello. Uh, I just want to tell you, these are too expensive. I don't think we should buy shoes that are expensive. Bye-bye. Hey, for $1.99, I was joking. I'll buy some shoes. You should be like, no, 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 no,
Millions of bunnies die every year, not just from illnesses, but also from people that buy bunnies as Easter presents. Most bunnies that get adopted for Easter will be abused, set free into the wild, or brought back to the shelter to live the miserable lives they once were living before. Bunnies take lots of responsibility and years of practice. So don't just buy a bunny for an Easter present. Really think about it. Up next, we will be talking about bunny breeds. Duh. <laughs> oh no, I'm living here! You suck! I brought you a friend! Yeah, I'm not! Do you wish you had friends? Yes! The Locker Buddy, from the makers of Bunny Tote. Are you my friend? I'm trapped. I'm leaving. <laughs> Buy your locker buddy today. Call the police. Send help. So far on our breeds list of the, of the five rabbits, we have the Mini Lop, the Mini Rex, the Netherland Dwarf, the Home Lop, and the Havana. Thank you. I hope th that was very enjoyable as it was short. Goodbye. Today we're talking about bunny predators. If you have a pet rabbit, you should not take them near these animals. The first one is raccoons. They can kill baby bunnies really fast. All bunnies. And um, lynx. next, and then there's lynx. And there's bobcats. And then there's mountain lions. And there's also wild dogs. Hawks, too. Yeah. I hate raccoons! Wow, that was a lot of interesting stuff about bunnies. Man, the most interesting thing I thought about today was the raccoons. Did we even talk about Yes. Predators. Yeah, yeah like, like five that seconds. Session. <laughs> I quit. Okay, before I quit, these are the pictures and art of the week. If you would like to, then send in a photo or drawing of your pet rabbit. Keep in mind, not all photos or, or drawings will be accepted. Here are the photos. These are some very cute Netherlandorf bunny twins. And now, for the drawn picture. By a fan. Okay, now I quit. <laughs> well, that was weird. Well, come back next time for the Hop Gossips, and we'll have a new person for some reason, Hadley, uh, quit. Uh, I don't think she'll quit her job. I, I thought that's a I have no idea. I'm still accept, expecting my paycheck. Well, we're not giving her her paycheck at all. All right, let's bring it back and let's talk about some city council. So the city council had a couple committee meetings on Wednesday. It'll happen in the afternoon. Uh, we'll kick things off with Edmund Finance. They're talking about uh, uh, a block grant that's going to help the um, low-income housing and domestic violence housing and also uh, um, uh, lo um, emergency housing for the YWCA, which is getting the bulk of the uh, money from this block grant, which uh, total cost for YWCA uh, is for 25 new homes at 
and 13 room domestic violence shelter and overflow space for up to eight families at the YWCA. And the total cost of this is going to be $350,000 um, through this block grant. But there is more with other block grants, and there's other organi organizations um, like the POV, which is looking to get $30,000 through this block grant to help with the um, keep up with the intake of the unsheltered homeless and they would get thirty thousand dollars missoula agent services homeward and neighbor works are among the organizations that are being award grants as well for helping people with uh, low income statuses aaron pian explains uh, how these grants work very specific eligible activities to a community. The vast majority of those fall under poverty reduction initiatives or the creation or preservation of true affordable housing, so housing that meets specific income qualifications and specific goals within the community. Um, CDBG, for example, a small portion of that can be used on public services. It can also be used um, pu for public facilities, things like the Missoula Food Bank and the Pavarello Center. It can be used um, to acquire parcels for the construction of affordable housing, for demolition, for infrastructure work. Um, so there are very specific uh, activities that, that can be spent on. Home is primarily spent for the construction of new affordable housing. Um, so those applications come to us and uh, the projects that score the most competitively for those projects are meeting those eligibility criteria and also an even narrow, narrower field of what we locally have identified within those eligible activities as our primary goals. Um, All right, so that was Aaron Pian talking a little bit about uh, how uh, the city went about uh, obtaining the block grants. Uh, um, audits are usually done with a lot of these um, grants as well, um, especially since they are federal grants, and a lot of times they have to make sure that the money's going to the right places. Um, grants require specifics when they are spending those funds and are in compliance with federal government. Uh, of course, most grants are usually have to be in some compliance with one or one thing or another. Sometimes there are private grants where they just award money to organizations, and usually those are kind of like donation-based, not necessarily as much as grants, unless it's like an annual deal that they work with as well. That's kind of how you can tell the difference. Um, Aaron explains what actually could happen if uh, certain organizations did not meet the requirements to, uh, under these block grants. With HUD regulations. Um, if HUD determined that we were um, negligent in doing our due diligence on a local level, they could recall those funds federally, and then our entitlement community, the city of Missoula, would be required to pay, repay those funds uh, to HUD. Noncompliance is quite rare. When we do identify it at the local level, um, we're almost always able to work with the subrecipient to either get those funds repaid and then re-grant it out to another nonprofit or another entity for an eligible expense or to re remedy that in another fashion. Mm -hmm. Yep. So basically, a lot of the biggest thing that you uh, probably could learn about grants is from this particular admin and finance meeting. It was very, it's, it's also very important to be transparent with these grants as well. And the city will not be putting their money, their own money into this, except for the staff work that was involved in applying for the block grant. So uh, the block grants total for helping uh, low income emergency housing, uh, YWCA is getting the big chunk of it, but overall it's going to be about half a million dollars to many organizations that help with emergency and low income housing in the city of Missoula. So congratulations Missoula and let's move on to the next meeting and this is land use and planning. In preparation for a proposed annexation of 3,200 acres of land general com uh, um, comprising in the Missoula International Airport, the Missoula Industrial Park, Canning Creek Village Subdivision, and segments of West Broadway and MRL right-of-way city staff have been working with Oh, excuse me, with airport staff on annexation and zoning of airport-owned properties. So right now they're working on a mem memorandum of understanding, which is basically uh, a memorandum of agreement. So basically this is kind of like a buyer-seller agreement saying that, hey, Missoula is interested in buying and we uh, – it, it's kind of like it's like we want to buy and please don't sell it to anybody else. So it's kind of like under contract. So nothing's actually moving forward because there's no financial implications thus far. And here's Mike Keynes with Developmental Services talking about the area and just a little bit of background. The airport properties are all of those properties on the south side of uh, West Broadway. They're uh, in excess of 2,400 acres. 
So um, we've had several meetings with um, airport staff. They've been terrific to work with, and both the city and the airport authority see short and potential long-term benefits from annexation and uh, desire to make this a cooperative process. Um, I won't go into all the details, but uh, you know, we think that the zoning that we're proposing will definitely be helpful to the airport in the short term, and we've talked about other ways uh, that the city and the airport could cooperate in terms of emergency services, utilities, and so forth. All right, so this whole uh, annexation will be part of the city, and they're, they don't know exactly what they're going to do with the land, but with annexation, um, and they might even expand the neighborhood that they already have built over up an expressway. Um, and just so you guys know, like, you probably, um, you know, some of you uh, might are wonder, uh, might be wondering if it's like, hey, wait, what about all the airplane noise and the air, you know, like, Air, noise pollution from the airport. Don't worry. I've actually have a I have a friend, some friends that live up Expressway, and they don't really hear the air, the, you know, air, you know, the, the planes landing, unless you go to Hellgate Elementary, which I did, and there's a lot of planes on there. But that's just nowhere here nor there. So that's kind of what's happening with that. The city moved forward on moving forward uh, with this uh, memorandum of agreement, um, and it's not an official uh, annexation quite yet. So Public Works, uh, the Montana Department of Transportation will be performing structural testing on Orange Street underpass, which means there's going to be noise pollution. And they're asking the city of Missoula to uh, put a waiver on some of the noise pollution. They hope to be able to uh, do construction from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And 10 p.m. is the allotted time for noise pollution. So noise pollution usually comes to a certain amount of decibels within the city limits. Missoula passed a noise ordinance many, many, many years ago to prevent any loud noises uh, from occurring. And noise usually is louder at night because of the air pressure, and it really carries. I learned a lot of noise stuff from covering the Bonham Milltown meeting, but that's nor here nor there. Um, <laughs> so they just want to tell people, um, and they want the city to be like, hey, just have a waiver. Missoula Depart Montana Department of Transportation is going to be working on a survey about the overpass that goes Orange Street, you know, just around the roundabout, and they want to do some stuff. They're going to have some um, um, detour streets up to Spurgeon Road, so you might want to defer your uh, travels through Van Buren if you're coming off the highway, so just be aware of that. And that's going to be happening um, sometime Sunday through Thursday, may, uh, coming up pretty soon. Um, I think it's going to have to happen possibly next Sunday because then they would have to get Monday's board approval. So it's probably going to happen pretty soon. Um, so there's going to be some noise and usually high levels of noise restrictions happen from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the city limits of Missoula. Uh, of course, the county has no noise uh, limits, just so you guys know. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening. Um, and the reason why they have to do it at night because it's underpass of a highway. And they want to do it at very low traffic and determine this as well. But anyways, let's, let's hear from Troy Monroe. He's with MDT, and he talks about the overpass and structural integrity of the overpass. This was constructed a long time ago. They're not entirely sure as to what the bases are, so they're going to drill through to see you know, how much rock base is there, that kind of stuff, for, for stability purposes. And then also, what's the overburden on top of the, the bridge? So they'll be drilling and doing a full soil profile from First Street down to the top of the bridge. Follow up, go ahead. Uh, so, say the results were to come back and this is not a safe structure and there's um, like multiple jurisdictions involved with this bridge, do you have any idea what whose responsibility it would be to bring it to standard? I, I don't know who has the ultimate responsibility, but my guess is MDT would work to do any type of structural stabilization that they would need to. All right. So that was Troy uh, Monroe talking a little bit about that. You can watch the whole meeting about details and this and that. It's a it's pretty short uh, section of the meeting. It was at the top of the meeting. Uh, of course, that was Heidi West with the uh, on City Council. And MDT said that they wanted to do a more comprehensive survey on the overpass because currently there are replacing bridges over the Blackfoot near Bonner. Um, and they just want to do some follow-ups on a lot of the areas that have those kind of bridge overpass type scenarios. And they still hope to be done before 10 p.m. on most of these uh, nights of surveys, but they are wanting a waiver just in case. 
So expect uh, road closures in the evenings coming up near um, Orange Street overpass. Of course, you can watch all these meetings and more by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can learn more about your city of Missoula. But you can always go to MCAT.org, like us on Facebook, um, and you can go to Channel 1. 90 and you can watch those meetings and more from your city government on channel 190 or you can watch it on charter cable channel 190 but also um just wanting to let you guys know is that if you want to learn more about uh my morning show you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice to meet you write it out twice all you got to do is google wake up missoula you can find me on youtube facebook and twitter and just be sure to follow me you can watch this show and more um in terms of flagship friday uh fun um educational videos um links to um mcat.org and for more information about um content from missoula for missoula if you want to learn more information, you can email us mcat at mcat.org or you can call us 542-6228. Well, that about does it for uh, that segment. I'm going to throw it over to an uh, art clip for you guys. This is a new art clip from, I believe it's the Clay Studio of Missoula, and this will end next week. Usually all the clay installations at the Clay Studio are pretty of a revolving door, so you might want to get there as soon as possible. It's a really cool space um, to check out, and you can check out this gallery, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk about all the events that are kicking off this weekend for the city of Missoula. Hey guys, very uh, big thank you to Rick Phillips for producing those art clips from here in Missoula because a lot of times art galleries come um, uh, come in with art in and out and you don't see a lot of those art pieces ever again. So it's nice to have a little capture some of the art for uh, archive purposes. So anyways, let's talk about some events that are uh, happening here in and around the city of Missoula. Um, Let's talk about uh, some things. First thing, it's uh, early artist drop-in, Zootana Arts Community Center. Still at their old location on, um, I believe it's on, God, I'm just, I'm losing it right here. But it's right next to the railroad tracks on the other side of the tracks on the north side. Um, right next to Kettle House, um, Zootana Arts Community Center. Uh, this is for kids aged 3 to 5 years of age. And starting at 10 a.m. to about 11 a.m., it's a weekly fun and creative experience at the Zach each week. Uh, Lucas Phelan uh, will provide a new art project or music activity for you and your young artists to work on and explore together. You can sign up at zootownarts.org or simply drop in to start the class. So um, also that has drop-ins is Missoula Public Library. They do Tiny Tales and Storytime pretty much every Friday. They have it at various locations throughout the week, but primarily they do it at the Missoula Public Library. Around 10.30 a.m., your kid can experience and uh, be part of a reading experience with a bunch of other kids. It's a good way to get engaged with reading and learning to read as well because kids learn nine new words a day. Um, X-rays and radiation, Spectrum Discovery Center over at the old 812 Tool Avenue uh, for only 350 but if you're under three, you get in free at the, Missou at the uh, Spectrum Discovery Center here in Missoula. Celebrate nuclear science. Um, week with a making paper x-rays at the discovery bench as you learn about the history and science behind x-rays and radiation as well as the work of scientists um, Marius Stan and the week and this week's uh, makerspace is Strawbies. 
That's cool. Uh, Cribbage and Bridge, once again, Missoula Senior Center hosts a, uh, a weekly lunch and card game at the Missoula Senior Center, and you can hang out and have a little, ba get a little cool game of Cribbage and or Bridge. Big Read event happening at the, the uh, Grizzly Peak Book Discussion at the Missoula Public Library. A Wizard of Earth Sea by Ursula K. L. Guin is part of the Big Read Discussion at the Grizzly Peak Retirement Community, 3600 American Way in Missoula, starting at 3 p.m. So go to the um, Grizzly Peak Retirement Community. It's just behind Home Depot. Honoring the Mansfield. Uh, is, it, is it behind? God. Okay. Oh, yeah, it is. American's Way, uh, 3600 American Way. And if you don't know where that is, then that's where the Social, uh, social uh, Security offices are. Just remember, <laughs> it's behind Home Depot. It is. Okay, well, let's move on. Honoring Mansfield. So Mansfield is um, Marine and Mike Mansfield Center at the Marine and Mike Mansfield Library. We'll welcome members of the Mansfield family to the University of Montana to honor the legacy of Mike Mansfield and Maureen uh, Mansfield on Friday, October 19th. Just so you know, Mike Mansfield was a senator out of Montana. He is the uh, who became the uh, he, a senior uh, senator out of Montana and out of the uh, U.S. Senate. And then later on in his life, after he retired from the Senate, he became U.S. ambassador to Japan which uh, opened the door for a lot of Japanese exchange students and programs and sister cities to come to the University of Montana. Mansfield family members will share their memories of Senator and Ambassador Mansfield and his wife before a new plaque honoring the couple is dedicated at the statue in the commons between University Center and the Mansfield Library. Uh, Mansfield, I believe he died at age 98, 99. Um, so... He lived a long life. Um, he never stopped working for Montana. And speaking of Montana, Montana Instance Project is working a public open house. If, uh, if you feel as though that you have a family member or you yourself has, have been um, wrongfully incarcerated, um, Montana Innocence Project is hosting their annual open house on October 19th. Um, it's going to be at the uh, University of Montana, uh, the law school. You can't miss it. You just ask around. Um, the uh, the Montana they're doing the open house is uh, free and open to the public. There will be a featured speaker, Dr. Greg Hapikins. Uh, sorry, I'm just butchering the name. And this person is the foremost forensic DNA expert in the United States, and will speak on fixing forensic errors with DNA. And that's happening. And they also have a. Uh, a fun run tomorrow morning starting at 10 a.m., and I'll get to that a little bit later. But, of course, tonight, Top Hat is doing a family-friendly Friday uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. with drink specials for parents. While the other kids just have a fun, engaging environment just to hang out and enjoy some cool music at the Top Hat Lounge. Sometimes they have some great musicians playing, but otherwise, it's a great atmosphere for families alike to be there every Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, also, uh, tonight is the uh, uh, Young, Blood, Young Blood Brass Band, um, Campbell Young Bill Peterson and his band will be playing. Um, he, they are uh, Missoula natives. They went to Hellgate High School. I went to college with them. They're uh, great musicians all around. You can check that out. Happening at the Top Hat tonight. And of course, uh, the Montana Repertory Theater presents Buckle Up. And it's... Uh, it's a new plays on tap series. Buckle Up plays on tap as a recurring series of short site-based plays for small audiences performed in unexpected locations throughout Missoula. So think of a flash mob, but through the Montana Repertory Theater. And that starts at 6 p.m. at multiple venues. You have to go to the facebook.com slash Montana Rep to find out more information about that. If you guys are interested in going out and about tonight, uh, Elephant Gun Riot is going to be at Monk's Bar. It's going to be some rock music. The Tomcats will be at the Union Club, and uh, they're going to have a Women's Adventure film tour at the Roxy starting at 7.30 p.m. tonight. I have another art clip for you guys. I just want to show you as many of the art clips as I possibly can um, because these are wrapping up sometime next week, and it will end in October. This one is particularly from the Communities West. Um, yep, yep, Communities West, and it's part of the MAM installation. So you can check that out at any time. So uh, here it is, and then when I come back, I'll talk about some weekend events for you guys. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Arts at the Missouri Museum. You can check it all out, and it's ending at the end of October. All right, guys, so let's talk about some events that are kicking off this Saturday. Hey, Farmer's Market is still going strong. You guys can check that out from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. I believe by the end of October or maybe sometime pretty soon. This might be the last weekend to check it out. All sorts of fruits and vegetables and stuff because apple season is just getting oh, – of course, apple season's already been upon us. They have so many apple days and so many festivals happen over the weekend. It's ridiculous. But they still have a bunch of that surplus stuff and a bunch of uh, cider will be being sold at all the farmer's markets. So it's a good way to be a part of that and more. Okay, let's move on to the next thing because I'm talking too fast. A day of Buddhist practice. Unitarian – Universalist Fellowship is hosting a meditation, mind training. This is a third Saturday of each month. Big Sky Mind hosts a one-day meditation retreat, um, traditional uh, Tibetan Buddhism, which will offer practical methods for exploring and uh, reframing our thoughts and pers uh, perspectives to bring about more peace and ease in our daily lives. And to find out more information, go to BigSkyMindMontana.org. Run for justice. Like I said, the um, Montana Innocence Projects is doing a fun run. Um, and part of the Montana Innocence Projects open house today, they're doing a run for justice. And they're hosting this run to raise awareness for wrongly convicted and to promote justice. And that starts at 10 a.m. And they're going to start racing around the um, – the they're run's going to happen at the University of Montana. So they're going to run around campus together. Moon Randolph Homestead. From 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every Saturday, they have open hours, and you get to learn about the, Mon uh, the Moon, Randolph Ho Moon Randolph Homestead. It's first come, first serve. You can go up there anytime. It's a publicly owned land. It's owned by the city, so it's for the public to roam around and see an old homestead, which made Montana, uh, a bunch of communities like it, Montana, in Montana, possible without homesteads. So you get to learn about homesteading from back in the day. So um, Moon, Rav Moon Randolph Homestead, it's like basically up there. Um, just go up towards Waterwork Hill. It's in that general area. Uh, <laughs> you can also find out more information by going onto their website, moonrandolphhomestead.org. Uh, Montana, um, Montana, yes, it's in Montana. A lot of things are in Montana. But MCAT Saturday drop-ins are here in Inside MCAT, 500 North Higgins Street, 105, from 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday. MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-in, which has kids create stop animation and some live-action videos. And the kids are interested in doing that, they can do that. Open hours in the makerspace of the Missoula Public Library are from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Kids and adults alike get to make uh, some use out of the 3D printers and more at the library. The Laramie Project at the University of Montana, the October makes the 20th anniversary of Matthew Shepard's murder, and Empower Montana will be honoring his wa his life through a production of the Laramie Project. After, you, after his murder, in 1998, members of the Tectonic Theater Project in New York City traveled to Laramie, Wyoming to interview residents on how the attack on Matt had affected the town. These transcripts were transformed into the play The Laramie Project, which tells stories of real people who lived in the epicenter of one of the, um, of the nation's most heinous anti-gay hate crimes. And this is going to be at the UC Theater at uh, 7 p.m., and it's $10 to get in. Sunday... Uh, spooky Skate, Glacier Ice Rink. I just want to give a shout out to the Glacier Ice Rink. They always have fun themed um, uh, skating events there. Um, enjoy Halloween party uh, ice at Glacier Ice Rink at the 6th Annual Spooky Skate. This event takes place Sunday, uh, October 21st from 12 to 2 p.m. and features fun with the whole family activities including skating to spooky music, trick-or-treating, costume contests, and skating performances of Michael Jackson's Thriller by Missoula Figure Skating Club. And this is happening um, $6 for adults, $4 for children under 18, and skate rentals are $3. And uh, Free Cycles, giving a shout out to them. 1 p.m., um, they're doing their annual tweed ride. And usually they've done this during this summer, which is bad because tweed is a uh, really thick fabric. Pull on your finest tweed and best uh, steed. Over 100 riders will take the streets and trails in the heart of Missoula on a beautiful fall day. Starting at Free Cycles at 1 p.m. Uh, having fun raising awareness of for bicycle riding and raising funds to help keep Free Cycles Community Bike Shop remain free, open, and strong. If you are interested in biking or making your own bike, you go to Free Cycles to do all that stuff. Uh, go to freecycles.org for more information. But their tweed ride is at Free Cycles, kicking off at 1 p.m. October 21st, 2018. If you guys are interested in going out and about tonight, just so you, uh, I mean, tomorrow night, God, I, I'm just like all sorts of things. There's a lot of things happening tomorrow night. It's the Goth Ball at Monks. You got Salsa 406 at Dark Horse. You got Money Penny at Union Club. They got Gay Terror, Queer Day 
dance party at Western Cider. They got the last reveal, uh, last revel, sorry. And it's going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be folksy rock music tomorrow night, all happening at the Top Hat and more. But if, of course, you can always learn more information about Missoula Events by going to MissoulaEvents.net if you're interested in finding about, hey, what's going on in Missoula? Here it is. This is what's going on in Missoula. You can also, you know, like, Facebook is also a really good source for events that are happening in the Missoula area. A lot of organizations put money down for events, so it's always a good way to subscribe to Facebook because there's so many people that I know just like, dude, you know so much about what's going on in Missoula. It's like, yeah, because I basically be subscribed to so many different um, um, art venues and music venues in the city of Missoula, so I get notifications when things happen. And that's how you can do, just so you guys know. Anyways, that's it for my show. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I'll be back next Wednesday, uh, hopefully uh, with a brand new dub and stuff and more. Um, but thank you guys for joining me, and I want to uh, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's going to be a nice, beautiful uh, weekend as well. And if you want to drop your kids off here, MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. But if you miss it this Saturday, there's always any other Saturday coming up. So thank you for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend again. Mm -hmm.